everyone, it's Shel C from Pip Rock to Your Studio, and today I'm sharing with you a little art doll I made for a swap. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've seen me do several of these, and I will put links to some of them at the end screen and in the iCards. If you just scroll over the upper right hand side, you'll see a little a little symbol that will pop open and you can watch some of the other art dolls I've made. Uh, I belong to a group that does paper art dolls, and what I do seems to be a lot different than what everyone else does, but hey, that's that's what is what it is. Um, I am doing the theme hybrid, animal hybrid humans for this time, and that was what the theme was, and so I was still kind of in a mood for pink and... Um, I decided that I would use up a lot of my pink scraps that I have in a stack around here. <laughs> Actually mixed up with everything. I would use them and collage my body. All the bodies that I've done up to this point, I have done this method. I've usually, I usually use um, 140 pound cardstock and I collage them with... Uh, text paper, uh, aged paper, um, papers that have a lot of pattern and interest, but are kind of neutral colored. I don't try to do them in a color. This time I'm doing pink. This bunny is going to be pink. All its parts are going to be pink. <coughs> so I have my pinks, my purples, um, some lighter purples, and some mixed papers that have maybe a little yellow or orange on them, but I am just gluing them down. These are pieces of uh, <clears throat> a cardboard envelope that I get stencils in from Stencil Girl. They mail their stencils in these flat cardboard envelopes, and they are fun to make stuff out of. You can cut them up and use them to make journal covers and stuff like that, and these pieces were just sitting on my cutting board for some reason. I can't even remember what I cut them up for, but I decided I would use them because they are the right weight to make a doll like this. So I am using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium and collaging both sides of the paper. And I have three different pieces of paper. I have a wider, shorter one, and I have two longer, skinnier ones. And I got them all collaged up, and in the end, I just used... The fatter one and one of the skinnier ones and I have one left but I am collaging both sides so I'm doing all three uh, for one side setting each one to dry or heating them up to dry and then flipping them over and doing the same thing on the other side because when I make my paper art dolls I like them to have both sides not like a paper doll where it was nothing on the back and then you tabbed its little clothes on or whatever Mine are always front and back. So I, I draw on the back too. I do everything that I would do on the front on the back. And I make sure that their clothes go all the way around. And I've done them in some really weird ways. This one's very simple in comparison to some of the ones that I've done. You guys can watch the videos because I've filmed them all. So now I want to unify this collage. So I'm mixing some... Uh, glazing medium, which is a clear acrylic with no pigment in it, with some light pink and a little drop of primary magenta. Mixing that all up into a pinkish glaze and then glazing over the entire thing and then wiping it back in places where I think I should. Um, using a baby wipe, this is, you know, your standard glazing 101. <laughs> I was pressing it down with a brayer because the paper was... Uh, humped so I got them flattened out a little bit with a brayer while I was doing this and it does make it makes it look like it takes takes away the whites it makes it look more one color even though obviously it's a bunch of different colors right it's different colors different patterns uh, it's it's doesn't stop it from looking like that it just makes it a little bit more one thing altogether so the next thing is to draw my pattern. And what I wanted was I wanted a big head doll. Um, you know, one of those ones that has a big head and a small skinny little body. That's, I was thinking of a bunny. 
and I was thinking how they have very narrow hips and, well, not necessarily fluffy bunnies, but like more like jackrabbit style. They're skinny on the backs. They've got really, they, they, their rib cage goes down to a very skinny section and then their hips are skinny and they're, then they have long skinny legs that makes them be able to run really fast. So that's how come I was thinking about one of these, these dolls with a large head and small body. So I made the head first. I made sure that I had a neck that I could put a hole in to make it articulated. Then I made a narrow body and each piece that I'm drawing, I'm putting the one previous up against it to make sure that it all fits together. Um, and then that I've got all the proportions correct because the body is going to be its own proportion and then the head will be large. And that's just how I intended to do it. And I think it worked out. I did end up altering the, the head because the piece of paper that I had collaged, the card card paper that I was had collaged, wasn't wide enough to do the entire head in one piece. So I decided to make its ears be articulated as well. So in the end, the ears can droop. Even though I, I drew one of them droopy on one side instead of them both sticking straight up, but you can actually take the ears and pull them down and make it into like a lop-eared bunny if you wanted to, uh, because they are attached with brads. So what I'm attaching everything with is mini brads, mini paper fasteners. You can find them on Amazon. Um, just search, just search mini paper fasteners, or else use a link if I put one below. Um, and I use what I call a pokey tool, which is an awl, is the real name of it, um, to poke through. And I'm using a couple layers of foam, um, dense foam that is left over from a project that my kid did. And he gave me the leftovers and I'm planning on making them into foam stamps. But I just used those to, to make sure that I didn't stab through my new uh, silicon mat that I have here. I didn't want to make a hole in it. So... It takes a bit of pressure because you've got the cardboard and then you've got two layers of collage that you're poking through. So lots of poking power. <laughs> but it just makes a little hole and then I attach them with the, the fasteners and then that makes the doll articulated. It makes the legs and the legs bend at the knees, the, the shoulders, the hips, um, arms bend at the shoulders, obviously. I didn't make the elbows articulated on this one. Sometimes I do. And then the ears as well. So once all the pieces were cut out and poked, I sponged around the edges with some bright pink ink just to cover up that brown edge that you would see. And now I'm going to work on the details. So since I'd already drawn my figure on paper, I decided to just cut out the eyes and then I can just lay it over the top and get them lined up rather than drawing them again. So I cut them out with an X-Acto knife, actually just one, and then I flipped it over. Also, as you're making the pattern, it's a good idea to fold the pattern in the middle and trim off so that you have balanced sides. Anything that I draw ends up having one larger side than the other. That's just, it always does, no matter how hard I try. So folding it in the middle. Also, I could get the features drawn on better by folding it in the middle as well. So I penciled in the features onto the face and now I'm gonna paint it. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to draw in all the lines with black, I'm going over all the lines with black, which this is a Faber-Castell pens, illustration pens that are India ink, so they will be permanent and I can paint over the top with wet media. So trying to get everything lined up perfectly, everything drawn on well. It ended up that the way that I made the face, it actually looks like one of those gray aliens a little bit. <laughs> that wasn't intentional. I was thinking about how um, rabbits have large eyes to see, but then they have, you know, a little muzzle. And so I was trying to make it look like a muzzle and it ended up just kind of looking like one of those weird gray alien illustrations that we've all seen. 
<clears throat> so the first thing I do is I add some of that light pink inside the ears and down the central part of the face. Um, there was some pretty dark paint there that I thought was maybe a little bit distracting. So I went ahead and, and lightened it up with this light pink acrylic to start out with. Using a paintbrush that's slightly damp and also patting back. Um, I don't want to completely obliterate the pattern of the paper. I just want it to be lightened a bit. And so I use a wet baby wipe to just kind of pat, 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 pat over it to take back some of the paint. Just so it looks more unified. And then I get out my Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons and I'm going to use those to add color. This is, like I said, water soluble. So it, I am painting over the top of this, but then I will spray it before I send it. At least I think I did. It's already gone. The lady's already got it by now, I'm sure. By the time the video is going live. So I'm using the crayons. Instead of drawing them directly on most of the time, I draw them onto my paper plate. Um, I scribble them onto my paper plate and then pick them up with the brush. And that gives me a little bit uh, less patchy color. So I've got a magenta that I'm using and then oh, I paint in, paint in the eyes with the acrylic paint. Sometimes I also will mix the acrylic paint with the Neo Color and it makes it a little bit more permanent. But I didn't do that this time. I just figured I'd spray it. I mess with the nose a lot because I want it to look as if she has a muzzle that is a thought part is coming out from her face and so I'm trying to add shadows I'm trying to lighten up the nose I keep changing do I want it darker do I want it lighter I keep changing it back and forth <laughs> so I mess with it a lot a lot a lot during this process sometimes this process takes a long time just going back and forth adding color taking away color adding color taking away until you're happy this one wasn't nearly as, as intense as some of the other ones I've made. This doll is a lot simpler. Going back over the lines, because once you paint over the top of the lines, then the lines get blurrier, and then you have to go and draw them back in again if you want real illustration lines. If you don't care, you can just paint over them and they can just be shadows, but I, I wanted actual lines. The pen I'm using is a Pentel pocket brush. It has a very thin little brush. I can make thin and thick lines with it, and that's what I like about it. I do end up going around the whole head with little lines of dark and around the ears too. Uh, I don't do the body. I don't actually do any modifications to the body. I just left it the way it was after sponging the edges and attaching them together. I didn't try to draw um, any type of features on the body because, I mean, if it was going to have breasts, it would need to have six of them, right? <laughs> if it was going to have, um, I mean, it wouldn't have a butt, so I didn't do that part. You know what I should have done and what I meant to do and I forgot was to uh, put a tail. Man, that was dumb, wasn't it? I should have used like a white pom-pom type ball. I probably just don't have one though, but that would have delayed my process, I guess. But yeah, that would have been cute to glue a pom-pom onto her butt. That <laughs> would have been cute. Oh well, I drew in some hair, uh, curly, curvy, weird hair across the top of her head because I just thought it looked too plain. And then I painted it in with the light color acrylic and then added more colors with the Neo Color 2. I think some blue and some 
purple and I don't know what all. I made her have blue eyes too at some point. A little bit of shadow under the neck. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question. Um, subscribe if you want to. Turn on your notification bells. If you do, subscribe so you know that there's a new video. Share this on Pinterest or whatever you'd like to do. All those things help the YouTube algorithm find my channel and recommend it to other people. So that's the reason <clears throat> that I nag you incessantly about doing it because that's how people find me. That's really the only way people find my channel. So I'm just continuing to add color and, um, you know, go over the lines again and then add more color and then go over the lines again. <laughs> I'm sure I'll go over these lines one more time at least with the black at some point. And then I'm going to flip her over and draw hair onto the back of her head as well, same process. Because you don't just have hair in the front unless you've shaved the rest of your head and that would be weird. But I think I have seen it before where someone just had bangs or a fringe, depending on, on where you live, and the rest of the entire rest of their head was shaved. I believe I've seen that before at some point. So I guess you could have had that, just bangs and nothing on the back. <laughs> don't you worry I gave her hair on the back of her head too she didn't have to go all shave so I think I'm finally finished with the front <laughs> how long did that take oh no I had to did have to add some more white highlights that is actually a white Posca pin and I just made a puddle by pushing the pin down onto the plate and then I'm picking it up picking up that very opaque white um which basically now is an acrylic ink, picking it up with my water brush and applying it that way instead of using the pen itself. But the stuff that's inside the Posca pen, not sure there is an ink out there that is more opaque than that stuff. And then maybe I'll be done with the front. Will I? Probably, I think so. Time to flip her over. So now I'm drawing the hair on the back side of the head with the little curly cues and flips and whatever. Um, like I did on the front, only longer. It would be funny to see a bunny hopping through the desert with hair on its head, wouldn't it? That would be funny. But this is an animal-human hybrid, so it's okay to have hair. That kind of hair. Not just regular fur. <laughs> And I'm going to go through the same process of coloring here on the back as well. Just going to make it eight times fast so that it goes by a little bit faster. Drawing around the edges and then going in with the light pink to start out with and then adding blue and adding, I don't know what else, more other pink, hot pink, I'm not sure. <laughs> there we go, hot pink, magenta, and then blue. There's the blue, and then maybe I go in and add a little bit of highlight, do the, the lines again. We're getting there. We're almost there, right? <laughs> yep, doing the lines again, because that pesky paint just keeps covering up my lines after I make them all nice and black. Then it just comes in and ruins everything, right? And some of the white highlights, like I did before. Real quick. Pretty fun. So then, um, after this is all dried up and ready to go, I am going to have to come up with some sort of clothing. And a couple people that follow me recently have sent me little box of scraps of fabric. A couple different people have. 
Um, one of them called it fabric salad, and I really like that because it is like just little bits of torn up pieces of, of fabric, nothing nothing you could make anything out of, but like a little bit of scraps, which which I actually asked for, so therefore I got it. So I found this scrap, which had a salvage ed on, edge on one side and a hemmed edge on the other, like it was supposed to be a sleeve or something. I cut it in half, and it's kind of like a chiffon um, translucent material with a little bit of pattern and some flowers on it. And I used that hem to side to take a piece of organza ribbon and thread it through. And then all I had to do was just tie the little skirt in a bow right onto the doll. So that was probably the easiest outfit I've ever made for, <laughs> for one of my art paper dolls. You know I go really crazy with some of them. And she just has a little sash and you could tie it in the front if you wanted to and have the bow in the front. So then I thought she needed maybe a little basket accessory. So I'm taking a couple of the scraps, cutting a basket shape and a handle shape. I did make two pieces so that you could tuck something into the basket. I considered maybe putting a few little eggs or something in there, but I, I uh, didn't get, I didn't have anything. So I just left it, but it should have eggs or something in it, but I guess it's it's before she's gone on the hunt or after she's hidden the eggs, one or the other. I'm not sure. <laughs> All the things that my head goes through, you know, this is how it is. So I sandwiched the little handle piece in between the two pieces and I trimmed down the front piece so that it did scoop down a little so that you could tell there was a front and a back. It, make it a little bit more dimensional. And I just glued all that together. So it does have a little bit of pocket. It, it does, it's hard to see, but it does. I also drew a little swirly line across it to make it look like it had kind of an edge. And then I tied it on and that was it. So here is your close-ups. Thanks for watching, bye-bye. <laughs>